So you may have heard about Global Shutter, but what exactly is Global Shutter? Why is it useful and do you need it? Let's find out today. So traditional camera sensors capture the data sequentially, meaning by line of pixel, whether it is horizontally or vertically. Now, this is not a problem per se. However, there is a delay between the moment that you capture the first line of pixel and the moment you capture the last line. Now, if your subject's movement is faster than this capture duration, you will start seeing some jello effect in your picture with some distortions. And this is referred to rolling shutter. The difference with a global shutter is that the entirety of the sensor is captured at the same time, meaning that whatever happens, you will not have those jello effects in your pictures, whether it's for photo or video. So you might ask yourself, okay, why not put a global shutter in every single camera? Well, it's a bit complicated. Typically global shutter are harder and thus more expensive to manufacture. For you to be able to do a global shutter, you need a stack sensor. Usually sensor capture the light and then transfer this information into a processor, basically transforming the light into electronic signals. However, in a stack sensor, you have an extra layer in the sensor that allows you to both buffer and prepare the data for it to be accelerated in terms of computation. And because you add this extra layer, it's basically more expensive to manufacture. So having a global shutter typically costs more. And this is why you have global shutters in specific cameras that are higher end, like for example, the Sony A9 Mark III or some RED camera like the Raptor 8K, as well as the Urza Mini 12K from Blackmagic. So if you want to have a cheap and affordable camera, having a global shutter is kind of overkilling it and will just bump the price of the product. Now getting rid of rolling shutter is not the only advantage of this technology. If you have been using flash, you know that your camera has a maximum sync speed with specific flashes. For example, on the Fujifilm camera that I use, it's 1 over 250th of a second, meaning that if I set my shutter speed to higher than that, I will start seeing some dark part on my images, which is basically um, some pieces of my shutter that will be visible when taking pictures with flash. Now, if you use a global shutter, because you don't have that curtain closing anymore, and because everything is captured at the same time, you won't need to have that maximum um, shutter speed when you use a flash, meaning that you could use flashes with one over 8,000 of a second without any problem. And that allows for more creative shots, especially with very fast moving subject using flash. Another issue that the global shutter solves is to, for example, getting rid completely of that curtain element in cameras, which is typically the first one that kind of breaks which makes your camera more robust and typically would last longer. But who needs global shutter? So if you are into fast moving subject like wildlife or sports photography, a global shutter could be useful to you. This would allow you to capture birds or small animal moving very fast without any distortion in your pictures, whether you are taking videos or photos. If you are a cinematographer that is also focusing on very fast moving subject, like for example, sports or cars or planes, etc. And you want to really have a clean footage and get rid completely of the jello effect, then global shutter might be something that you would want to look into. However, for most people, global shutter is not a necessity, which is why you don't see it nowadays in every single cameras. However, in the future, with the technology getting cheaper and cheaper, we might see cameras adopting global shutter altogether and getting rid of the current architecture, which basically focuses on curtain closing. So thank you for watching Pro News. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And if you've missed it, check out our review of the Sony A9 Mark III, where we review the camera with a global shutter. We'll see you there.